Hey guys, so after the epic project of my last video, I just wanted to bring you something quick today. Something fun, hopefully. Uh, one of my commenters, well, a couple people actually noticed in the background of a few of my videos, I have this, Tomy's Digital Diamond, which uh, was kind of a cool little sort of electro-mechanical baseball game from the 1970s. And I just wanted to kind of show it to you today. Um, it's They don't make stuff like this anymore. This is my original digital diamond. I don't have the box anymore or anything like that. I don't even have the battery cover, as you can see. Um, I was not a careful child, and I did have this as a child. I'm a lot more careful now. But just want to go through this, kind of play it for you, show you how it works. And then I'm actually going to open it up, I hope, and fix a couple little things about it. Uh, it is quite old and obviously was never meant to last this long and it is mechanical. So certain things don't work as well as they should. I'm going to open it up and hopefully just tune it up and get it working a little better. So anyway, let's get started. Here's a page from the 1979 Sears Wish Book. This was the giant catalog that Sears used to send out to all their regular customers. This is from wishbookweb.com. If you want to take a look at some of these, they have a, a large collection of these catalogs. And you see the digital diamond right in here in the middle of the page. Um, I used to specifically look for this section of the catalog whenever we got one of these. I loved looking at all the toys and the electronics. And I don't know if you can see down here, but this would have retailed for $9.97. And interestingly enough, the last date to order this item was January 31st, 1980. So I would have had this in either 1979 or more likely 1978. By 1979, I actually had this electronic baseball from Entex over here. And I probably actually still have that somewhere in the attic. If I find it, maybe I'll do another video about that. Now, obviously, Tomy is a Japanese company, and it did come out in Japan. It came out in white in Japan. This is that release, and you see the box here. Here's the American box for it, which I don't have. I only have the unit itself. By the way, this is all from handheldmuseum.com if you want to check out this page. Now, the cool thing about the Digital Diamond is it does have the rules written out right on the back of the, uh, of the toy. So if you forget how to play it, you can just uh, read through this, but... Basically, I'm going to go through it with you now. It is a two-player game. Um, now, I used to play it one player just because uh, I figured out how to do that with a lot of my games. And it's not nearly as much fun with one player um, because you kind of know what pitch is coming every time. But basically, you'd have one person sitting on this side, another person sitting on that side. You'd have this in between. Uh, one of you would be pitching. One of you would be hitting. When you are ready to hit or pitch, uh, slide that up to the reset. And your little light there represents the pitcher. Uh, this, the flickering light, if you see that, is one of the problems that I'm going to try to fix. The power switch, as often happens on these things, I'm sure is oxidized. But basically then the pitcher, you can select between ball and strike with a little switch up here. Somehow you're supposed to hide that, whichever one you pick, from the batter so he doesn't know what's coming. But I'm going to pick strike right now so that I can hopefully hit the ball for you. And when the ball comes down, you would hit this batting button. And hopefully that's what happens. This lights up, shows that you've hit it, and... The guy on the other side is supposed to click the defense button at that point, stop the uh, little rotating thing there, and you see I got a two base hit. This is fully manual from this point on. You flip that up, see I got a guy now at second base, and we're going to keep track of these things ourselves. So let's reset. Let's say I get a ball now. And now I would actually slide the ball slider over to the ball. I have one ball, no strikes. Let's try and get another hit. Let's try and get this guy home. Oh, and I got a hit. So I used to try to be nice. We always played with the rule that uh, a hit would just drive the guy by one base. So we're at first and third right now. 
And as you see, my slider doesn't stay up. I'll try and see if I can fix that as well. And another hit, hopefully. Nope, that one isn't out. So one out. Let's just keep trying to get these guys home. Whoop, we've lost power. Got it back. Let's call that a strike. A three base hit. So that's a two run hit right there. And since I'm batting first, I'm obviously the visitor. So two runs. And that's how you keep track of score. And <laughs> it was fully manual, kind of on the honor system in some ways, I guess, to make sure you recorded all the balls and strikes correctly. And you just went on like that for nine innings until somebody won. Um, I'm not going to play a full nine inning game for you. I'm just going to kind of open this up, take a look at what's inside, and try to fix the few problems that it has. Okay, now I only count five screw holes here, and hopefully that's all there are, although I do feel a couple of things under the rules label here, which I hope those are not screw holes, but we'll just have to see when we get there. But otherwise, I'm just going to start unscrewing here. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if it comes apart. Nice. Okay, so as long as I have it open, I may as well show you a little bit about how this thing actually works. As a lot of these kind of mechanical electro toys were in those days, it's sort of like a mini Rube Goldberg machine. There's a couple of springs underneath these covers here. You see one of them there. One is stronger than the other. When you kind of wind the ball up here, it uh, clips under there. It pulls up this little lever. Let me just take the bat away from here so you can see that. Pulls up this, well, pulls up this little lever. And this is here is kind of what you have to time right in order to get the bat little cog to hold it in place, which makes a circuit here, which then turns on these lights. So that's basically the whole thing. Um, it's going to fly apart if I just do it uncarefully right now. So let me just, uh, I'll, I'll do it a little bit slowly so you can kind of see what happens. Um, at that point, that would be a hit. I've locked the cog on this lever, which is pushing up this little metal piece that is making a full circuit here. And that electricity then is going up into the wires, into the lights up there. So that's basically how it works. Um, I was curious myself, and I kind of did a little uh, quick look at it after I took it apart. and. That is how it works. So now we all know. Um, I've also since uh, deoxided these contacts. They didn't look that bad, as well as the contacts on the switch uh, itself. Again, not that bad. So I don't know. I kind of think it's just wearing out. And I did fix the third baseman here. He now stays up. That was just, these are these little metal... Um, I don't know what you call these, but these little metal pieces, and they're just bent. They're just held up through tension, and the third baseman had just come unbent after a while. I did notice that the second baseman had a little bend right there, so I added a little bend to the third baseman there, so it's actually rubbing against the, uh, the lens now, which is how it was designed in the first place, so I'm totally fine with that as long as it stays up. So, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, this is as fixed as it's going to get. This is not really a repair video, but, you know, may as well fix what I can as long as I'm in there and figuring out how things work. So, I'll put it back together now and we'll see how it works now that it's repaired. So, let's just turn it on and see how we did with the fixed power switch. 
and that's it works great the, I don't know if I mentioned this before but I did also tighten it up a little bit uh, it's just a little bit of bent metal in there and it had come unbent a little bit as these things do over time so I just re-bent it and works great works like new let's try to actually play and see if I can uh, <laughs> hit the ball now that I know approximately where it needs to be here in order to actually get that cog to lock that lever in place that makes the circuit that turns on all the lights. Let's just check it out. Nope. <laughs> Not as good as I thought I was, but let's try again. Oh, and it's an out. But let's pretend I got a three base hit and I now have a guy standing on third. Look at that. I can shake it all I want and it doesn't move. So this thing, such as it is, is repaired. And, uh, you know, it wasn't really meant to be a repair video, but uh, kind of turned into a short little one and ended up successful in the end. So hope it was satisfying for you. Hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it kind of a simple video for once. And I will be seeing you next time. So bye-bye.